We're going to now solve equations by putting the principles together. It's one of the most important topics in an introductory algebra course, and I have a good 15 to 20 problems that I'd like to share with you. So I'm going to put this together in multiple clips so as not to make any one of them too long. Um, the first problem or two that I'd like to share with you, I'm going to have two variables, I'm sorry, two terms on one side, and my goal is going to be to isolate the term that contains the variable. So I would like to get the 7x alone, and it's got a plus 2 attached to it. So the way to get rid of the plus 2 is to subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. Again, I'm trying to isolate the variable. Again, I work in a vertical approach, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. The 7x will be all alone, and 13 minus 2 is 11. I will divide both sides now by 7 to get my solution. And what you need to become accustomed to is that you can't expect all answers to be nice. Um, they will turn out to have solutions that are fractions. Improper fractions are fine to leave them with the numerator larger than the denominator. And also you should be able to check those. So let's go ahead and take this one and check it. So I have the original problem, 7x plus 2 equals 13. And I want to put a 11 sevenths right here in for x. So I think I'm just going to stick a 1 underneath that 7. And what you have to, have to notice here then, again, that 7 is an integer. It's in the numerator over that 1. It would be easiest if we would just notice here that we can remove those common factors, one on the top and one on the bottom. And what we're left with in the numerator is 11, and in the denominator, 1, which I'm not going to bother to write there. And I want to know, I want you to tell me if 11 plus 2 is indeed equal to 13. And if so, you can just stop and say, yep, I checked that. That is a true um, solution to this equation. Let's look at another one. Very similar. Not going not to change my routine quite yet. So if I have 5y minus 2 equals, um, let's go with uh, 28, I'm going to try to get the term with y in it all by itself. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides of this equation, and then the 5y will be all alone because those add to be 0, and the right side 28 plus 2 is 30, and now I use the multiplication principle. It's what I use last. I use the multiplication principle always last, and I'll divide both sides by 5 and find my solution to this problem is y is equal to 6. I should go in and check it and see if I did that correctly. Let's go um, with some negative coefficients in front of x. I don't know why I chose such large numbers sometimes. Oh, well. Um, I'm going to try to isolate this term by adding 7 to both sides of this equation. So I'll have a negative 5x equals, and 108 plus 7 is 115. Now I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 5 to get x alone. So I've got to divide this by a negative 5, and I will have x is equal to, it looks like a negative 23 would be my solution. I think I'll go ahead and check this one. I'll see if I have enough room over here. So the original problem is a negative 5x minus 7 equals 108. And I wonder what a negative 5 times a negative 23 will be. And then I'm going to subtract 7 from that. Let's see, a negative times a negative is a positive. And let's see, that would be 115. Then I'm going to subtract the 7, and I wonder if that equals 108, and I pause for a minute, and oh, it sure does. The left side is equal to 108, the right side is equal to 108, and I can check and see that I got that problem correct. Let's uh, see if we can kind of keep doing some further things with this, this concept. Addition principle first, please notice. Um, I'm just, this time, the only reason I put this problem down to share with you is because I wanted you to see if the variable term is on the right-hand side. Again, you're still focusing on it. You want to get the 9t alone. So the way to get that alone, since it has a plus 8, is to subtract 8 from both sides. 
Please remember, it's called the addition principle. When you subtract 8, you're adding a negative 8. So you're adding these two negative numbers. And when you add them together, you add their absolute values and get 99. And you give that value the, the common sign that they share. So remember, a negative 91 plus a negative 8 is a negative 99. And now I'm going to turn to the multiplication principle, or I'm going to say that I'm going to divide both sides by 9. And I'm going to find out that t is equal to a negative number. Negative divided by a positive is a negative. 99 divided by 9 is 11. Again, I'm not taking the, the time to ch check them all the time. This would have a check. Um, let's go ahead and look at, at another. This one has two terms containing the variable. And they're on the same side of the equal sign in the problem. If there are like terms on the left side or the right side of the equation, you must collect them first. You can get away with it sometimes with not doing that, but it's, it's kind of not a good a choice to do that. So please take the negative 10y and subtract 3y. That would give you a minus 13y. So you have collected those two like terms. And now finally, because I have one term on the left and one term on the right, I'm ready to divide both sides by a negative 13 in order to get y alone. Again, that will become a 1, so I'll have y all by itself. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and it's equal to a positive 3. Pretty easy one to check. A negative 10 times 3 is a negative 30. A negative 3 times 3 is a negative 9, and a negative 30 and a negative 9 is that negative 39. Let's see, we can do another, one more problem. Before. I put this one here because I wanted you to see the 1 in front of the x. We don't write it, but it's there. And these two are like terms, because they both contain the variable x, and so I have to add their coefficients. So this 1 plus that 1 quarter makes for 1 and 1 quarter x. I really don't like to work with mixed fractions. I would rather call this 5 fourths. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5 fourths x. And then I will multiply by the reciprocal to get rid of that coefficient. So I'll multiply by 4 fifths on the left. Therefore, I have to multiply by 4 fifths on the right. That gives me just x. And let's see, let's reduce this. 5 goes into here once and into here twice. And 2 times 4 is 8. My solution to that problem is x is equal to 8. Again, you know, go ahead and put it back in here to check it. We can even do that fairly quickly. This is just 1 of whatever x is. That is 8 plus 1 fourth of our solution, 8. Well, 1 fourth of 8 is 2. And is 8 plus 2 equal to 10? It is. That's kind of a down and dirty quick check. I don't recommend it. But, um, you know, you have to prove to yourself that these check for you to walk out and say, I know I got all of those correctly. I'm going to stop, and we'll go ahead and um, start up with some tougher problems using both principles together.